Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Like we said in our week one recap, the first weekend of college football was unbelievable. And a major reason for that was the amount of upsets that we saw over the course of Labor Day weekend. We saw eight top 25 teams lose over the course of the first week of college football. The most surprising upsets for me were the likes of number 10, North Carolina, falling to Virginia Tech. Number 16, LSU, falling to UCLA. Number 20, Washington, falling to Montana out of the FCS. The other five ranked teams that lost, those all came in ranked versus ranked matchups. But as you can see, guys, there's a major shakeup in the new AP Top 25 poll that was released just a few hours ago. And like we've done every year, like we're going to do every week from now until the end of the season, we're here to break down this new set of rankings, share whether we agree or disagree. And of course, when the playoff rankings roll around, we'll start producing our own GE Top 25. But today, we're just taking a look at the new AP poll. So before we break that down, guys, before we dive in, again, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert here, bringing you college football news, predictions, and analysis year-round, guys. And now that we're in the middle of college football season, we couldn't be happier, and we've got nonstop content coming your way. Make sure to check out everything down in the description below, guys. That includes our brand new expert picks. If you haven't signed up for those yet, you need to. We just hit 60% of our bets in week one. It's going to be even better in week two. The link for that can be found down in the description, thegridironexpert.com. We've got college football spread picks. We've got NFL spread picks. Make sure to go sign up for those today so you don't miss out on any more of the analysis, any more of the picks. They come out every Wednesday, which means week two picks are coming out tomorrow. If you want to see those, got to sign up for them today. So make sure to go do that, guys. I promise you do not want to miss out on it. Again, some of the best spread picks in the entire country for now coming on this year, three years running. So let's take a look at the AP Top 25 poll, guys. We, going into week two, a week two that's not going to be nearly as exciting as week one, uh, but still has a couple of marquee matchups that we'll discuss here in a second. We'll obviously discuss in our week two predictions that also come out tomorrow here on the channel. Let's go ahead and just break it down team by team really quickly. Uh, I will say we'll start in the top ten, this first column over here. The number one and number two teams in the country are undisputed. Alabama absolutely deserves to be number one after their 31-point defeat of Miami. And then, obviously, Georgia in at number two with their big win over Clemson. The Bulldogs were number five. Clemson was number three. Georgia won that game 10-3. to uh, And we all knew that Georgia would end up jumping up that number two spot, and rightfully so. So it's Alabama and Georgia at one and two. They will remain there until proven otherwise. And it just feels that these two teams are on a crash course, a collision course to meet in the SEC championship game. And very well could be two SEC teams that make the college football playoff. Now, of course, we can't forget about Texas A&M. Uh, in at number five, but Alabama and Georgia are the teams to beat in the SEC and very well could make up half of the playoff field in 2021. Right behind Georgia, we have Ohio State. They moved up one spot after their win over Minnesota. Uh, and we didn't really know what was going to happen with Ohio State. They were number four, obviously, when they played Minnesota. We didn't know what was going to happen with them in Oklahoma because the Sooners are down two spots to number four after narrowly defeating Tulane. Only beat the Green Wave 40-35. to 35. Obviously, if Oklahoma had annihilated Tulane like everybody thought they would, Georgia actually might be number three, and the Sooners still might be number two. Uh, because of their lackluster performance, they dropped two spots. Ohio State, going on the road and defeating a solid Minnesota team, got that bump up. Uh, and again, I don't think that would have happened had Oklahoma not struggled. Uh, so Ohio State at three, Oklahoma at four. Not many major changes. Again, it's still early. Texas A&M at number five. They moved up a spot after their win over Kent State. Clemson, that's the major storyline we're looking at here in the top ten. Clemson down three after their loss to Georgia. And I, I'm going to go out and say that I think that's a little too much. I, and I know it's just three spots. But to, to, to boot Clemson outside of the top five, to me, felt a little harsh. Again, the Tigers did not play great. Uh, the Tigers did not play great against Georgia by any means. But let's let's look at both, both teams here. Credit to Georgia for winning the game. Credit to Georgia for defeating Clemson. It was 10-3. to Let's keep in mind the only touchdown in that game was a pick six by Clemson. Georgia picked off DJ Uyunglele, returned at 74 yards to the house. Both defenses were phenomenal. Both offenses struggled. Georgia's offense wasn't very good in that game. Clemson's offense was very good in that game. Credit that to struggles offensively or credit that to both teams' strong defense. But to drop Clemson three spots, uh, to me, I still think Clemson should be above Texas A&M. I know you Aggie fans will disagree with that. But I still view Clemson as a top five team. Many will say they didn't look it. Let's keep in mind they lost to a top five team. Georgia deserved to be fifth. They deserve to be two now. But Clemson, to me, falling outside the top five seems a little harsh. Uh, again, I think they're being a little too harsh on the 
lackluster performance, you could say Georgia's performance was lackluster as well. They just ended up being better defensively than the Tigers did. So outside of Clemson, you have Cincinnati at 7. Cincinnati and Notre Dame at 7 and 8. They both moved up one spot. Cincinnati and Notre Dame taking care of business, although the Fighting Irish narrowly defeating Florida State in Tallahassee on Sunday night. That was an absolute thriller. But the Fighting Irish are still prime college football playoff contenders. Jack Cohn putting up big-time numbers against the Seminoles. We've got Iowa State down two spots. They were 7th. Now they're ninth after their narrow def- uh, de- defeat, they're defeating Northern Iowa, only beating them 16-10. to 10. That sets up a top-10 showdown now with college game day in town on Saturday between number 9 Iowa State and number 10 Iowa. College game day going to Ames for the Cy Hawk game between Iowa State and Iowa. Of course, it's going to be one of our games of the week, so we'll touch on that later on in the week, but number 9, number 10, you can't ask for anything better. Second week in a row, we're getting a top 10 matchup in college football. We saw Clemson, Georgia last week, now we're getting Iowa State, Iowa, and it's huge for both programs. And again, we'll touch more on that later. So Iowa jumping up eight spots into the top 10 after their dominating victory over Indiana. So I don't blame them for dropping Iowa State two spots. I think, you know, everybody says you see the most improvement from week one to week two. And I think you're going to see that for a lot of teams. Iowa State being one of them. uh, I really do think you're going to see a lot of teams that you thought, man, they looked horrible in week one, light it up in week two, do a whole lot better. Because you see so much improvement. It's the first time these guys have hit people and played in front of full capacity stadiums in over a year. So something to think about there. But very, very exciting top 10 matchup between the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes. And again, Iowa, we had them as a narrowly, right outside the top 10 in our early top 25. They played like a top 10 team and they took down Indiana. They deserve that top 10 spot now going into week two. And it should be a great matchup at Ames on Saturday afternoon. Second column over here. How about Penn State? The Nittany Lions up to number 11. They moved up eight spots just like Iowa did. Penn State taking down Wisconsin. Wisconsin 16-10 to in Madison, beating them on the road uh, really, I think, did a lot in terms of Penn State getting that boost in the rankings. Uh, and obviously, the defensive performance of the Nittany Lions was unbelievable. This team is back. They're legit. They are Big Ten title contenders, and they maybe could be a playoff dark horse, although we all know that's going to be determined on whether or not they can beat Ohio State, and that game will be in Columbus. So Penn State up eight, rightfully so, well-deserved. Oregon down one spot after narrowly defeating Fresno State. They've got a game against Ohio State in Week 2 in Columbus. So we have number 12 and number 3 on Saturday morning. I think it's an 11 o'clock kickoff. USC up one spot after taking down San Jose State. Texas, another big mover, up 6 from 21st to 15th after their defeat of Louisiana, defeating the Raging Cajuns by 20, 38 to 18. Remember, first off, that was Steve Sarkeesian's first game. Second off, Texas was 21st, Louisiana was 23rd, a lot of people had the Raging Cajuns as a trendy upset pick, certainly to cover. Many had them winning outright. Texas shut that down very quickly. Great offensive performance from Hudson Card, Bajon Robinson, solid defensive performance, keeping Louisiana in check. Texas up to 15th. Intriguing road matchup this Saturday, though, at Arkansas. Sold out crowd in Fayetteville, old Southwest Conference rivals. Is this going to be like you know years past where people start to overhype Texas a little bit and then they have a major letdown game the week or two after? Something to watch out for on Saturday. UCLA has cracked the top 25. It's about time, right? Chip Kelly squad, guys, you know, when they beat Hawaii, everybody was like, they looked really, really good. And we were like, yeah, they did, but it's just Hawaii. Let's see how they do against LSU. Not many people thought they'd take down the Tigers over the SEC. They didn't just beat LSU, they destroyed LSU. 38-27, to 27, over 400 yards of offense. LSU had no answer for Dorian Thompson-Robinson and his UCLA ground attack. Had no answer for it. And so, yes, they went from unranked to 16th. Basically basically took LSU's spot because LSU was 16th when they went out to the Rose Bowl last week. Chip Kelly and his squad deserve it. They are a Pac-12 South title contender. They are a Pac-12 title contender, period. I think Brett McMurphy has UCLA making the Rose Bowl now. If you had told me that a couple weeks ago, I thought you were crazy. But this team is very complete. Defensively, they look solid. Offensively, they absolutely look solid. And the Pac-12, we know, is not the strongest of conferences. UCLA can make a run. They're 16th in the country, and I only expect them to continue to climb in these rankings as we continue to move through these, uh, this season. So UCLA, very well-deserved, right ahead of Coastal Carolina in at number 17, up five spots. Coastal Carolina taking down the Citadel, and now has a game against Kansas at home on Friday night. And say what you want, yes, Coastal will win that game. Yes, Coastal is heavily favored in that game. But it's still a great opportunity for a group of five school to host a power five school on primetime national television. Great things are happening for Jamie Chadwell and the Chanticleers. 17th in the country, and like UCLA, they're going to continue to rise. 
18 is Wisconsin. They're down six. They were 12th when they played Penn State. They fell to Penn State because they were unable to, first off, capitalize off of the opportunities given to them, but unable to move the ball offensively. That's in credit to how well Penn State's defense played, but how poorly Graham Mertz played. Two interceptions uh, deep in the red zone, costly interceptions for Wisconsin. The Badgers, yes, are still Big Ten West title contenders, uh, but they're nowhere near as good as we thought they were going to be. Got a lot of work left to do. So they're down 6 to 18. Virginia Tech has cracked the rankings just like UCLA, a newcomer here. Like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Hokies in Blacksburg on Friday night took down number 10, North Carolina. So Justin Puente needed that win big time. Now they're there in the coastal race. It just got very interesting with the likes of Virginia Tech, North Carolina, Miami, and of course Pittsburgh. Don't forget about the Panthers. Ole Miss, also new to the rankings, coming at number 20 after their defeat, annihilation of Louisville just last night on Labor Day Monday down in Atlanta. Unbelievable performance. Without Lane Kiffin on the sidelines, Matt Corral and the Rebels torched Scott Satterfield and the Cardinals. And I don't know if I would want to face, I don't know if there's anybody that would want to face Ole Miss. I would be terrified of that offense. Matt Corral looked amazing. The defense looked much improved. Yes, say what you want. That was just Louisville. They're not that great, whatever. But it's still a Power 5 opponent on a neutral side. And Ole Miss made it look like it was a you know D2 school. They played phenomenal football on Monday night. And Ole Miss is the real deal. They're 20th, like UCLA, like Coastal. I expect them to continue to climb in the rankings. And here in a few weeks, they do take on Alabama. And that game might be closer than many expect. Final column over here. Really quick, Utah in at 21st, up three spots. They defeated Weber State, got a game against BYU this weekend, the Holy War. So keep an eye out on that one. Late night game, way out west. Could be a fun one, guys. Seven of the last nine uh, meetings between Utah and BYU have been decided by single digits, by one possession. But Utah has won all nine of those games. So we'll have a, more analysis on that in our predictions tomorrow. Miami down eight after the loss to Alabama. A lot of people said Miami should drop out of the rankings wholeheartedly disagree. Find me a team on this board. Find me a team in this rankings that could have played better than Miami did against Alabama. The Hurricanes didn't play well at all. But outside the likes of maybe Georgia, you know, Ohio State, some guys in the top five, there was not a single team on this board that could have hung with Alabama on Saturday afternoon. Not a single one. The majority of these teams would have suffered a devastating loss, embarrassing loss to Alabama and Atlanta. So say what you want about Miami. They're not any good. We knew Miami was going to get blown out. We knew Alabama was going to roll. They did just that. Bryce Young looked phenomenal. Alabama is the team to beat 100%. But to say Miami should have dropped from 14th to out of the rankings was absurd. Now, if they lose to Appalachian State this Saturday, kick them out. 100%. But let's give Miami the benefit of the doubt right now. I feel like there's still a lot of talent there. De'Aaron King is still a very talented quarterback. They're in at 22 right now. I think they can continue to rise in those rankings and show why they were a top 15 team to begin the season. Again, I don't know if there was anybody that was going to beat Alabama in week one. It wasn't going to happen. Arizona State up two. Still a Pac-12 title contender as well. Watch out for Herm Edwards, Jaden Daniels, and the Sun Devils. North Carolina dropped 14 after the loss to Virginia Tech. Uh, I think the Tar Heels should be considered lucky for remaining in the top 25. Because that was a pitiful performance in Blacksburg. Three interceptions from Sam Howell, a Heisman Trophy favorite at one point. Not anymore. Defense couldn't do much. Offense couldn't do much. I still have a lot of faith in Matt Brown and the Tar Heels. I think they'll work their way back up in the rankings, but it's going to take a long, long time to get back into that top 10. You know, This was a team that we thought maybe could challenge Clemson in the ACC title game if they got there, and now it's looking that they might not even get there. I know it's early, but the Coastal's looking a lot more competitive, and now they don't even own the tiebreaker over what many would say is the best team in the Coastal right now in Virginia Tech. So North Carolina still hanging on barely, they need to get back in the groove. They've got to fix a lot of things, guys. And then finally, number 25, Auburn. They beat Akron 60-60, to 10 in Brian Harson's first career game with the Tigers. Bo Nix looked phenomenal, but it was Akron. Let's keep that in mind. Auburn is in the top 25 right now because not this week, but the next. They will take on Penn State. They've got that shaping up to be a top 25 matchup in week three down in Happy Valley. It'll be an intriguing one. We'll have plenty of analysis out on that game, but... I'm not completely sold on the Tigers just yet. I, will, I won't argue that it should be in the top 25. Give them that last tw top 25 spot. It'll be a top 25 matchup in week three, obviously boosting the ratings. But that Penn State game will really tell us if Brian Hartson's squad is for real. But there you have it, guys. That's your new top 25 heading into week two of this college football season. Again, big-time games. Oregon, Ohio State, Iowa, 
Iowa State, Utah, BYU, Texas, Arkansas, and a handful of others. We're going to have them all covered for you. The top five games for us tomorrow in our week two predictions. we got our games of the week analysis coming out later in the week. And then, of course, we've got college football on Saturday. So we've got tons of analysis, tons of stuff coming your way. And I can promise you, you don't want to miss it. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at The Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. Go sign up for those expert picks today. Sign up for them right now so you don't miss out on our picks that are coming out tomorrow over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. The link for that is down in the description below. And again, after a great week one, I can promise you you don't want to miss out on what we've got the rest of the season because it's going to be our best season yet for both college and NFL. So make sure to go check that out. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.